It is 109 days till the man burns and today we're talking about what to carry in your night bag. Now it's something that's a bit different for everyone because obviously everyone has different requirements but there are some basics that you'll want to have covered like water. Pretty much all the time at Burning Man you need to have some water on you because you might think you're just popping out on a quick little adventure to go and do something and before you know it it's four hours later so you're going to want to have water on you just in case. If you are going to be drinking I would suggest bringing along a bit of extra water because alcohol can be very dehydrating and obviously water is the reverse of that. But you do actually need to drink that water even if you're drinking booze you will need to be drinking water in between all that booze to you know help stave off hangovers or just feeling bad and dehydrated. So water is a must and it's handy to have some snacks as well, you know, nothing huge, you know, maybe breakfast bars or trail mix or, you know, just something to nibble on if you get a bit peckish. If you're going to be drinking, you will probably want to bring along some drinks as well. Even though there are plenty of theme camps that give out free drinks, don't rely 100% on them. You know, self-sufficiency and all. You want to have some of your own, especially, you know, you might end up deciding you want to head out to the open player for the night and see what's going on or head out to deep player. And then if you do fancy a drink, obviously it's going to be much harder to get one unless you've bought your own. If you are going to be visiting these theme camps that give out free alcohol, then you will need to bring two things with you. A cup. These places are not giving you your alcohol in a glass. You are going to need your own cup and a valid form of ID. Burning Man is subject to the same laws as the rest of the world and that includes not serving alcohol to minors. And because a lot of theme camps are large and they have many different people running the bars and serving the drinks, some of them just have a blanket rule where they're like just get ID off everyone and then we're at no risk of ending up with a fine for serving alcohol to a minor. Some people photocopy their IDs and stick them to their cups and that can work especially if you are very clearly old enough to be drinking but it's not going to be accepted everywhere, it's not really a valid form of ID. So if you look quite young or if you just want to make sure that that's never an issue for you, make sure you're carrying around some form of valid ID. And I would advise against carrying around your passport because no one wants to lose their passport, especially if you've come over from abroad, because replacing your passport, especially an emergency replacement when you're abroad, is not cheap. So if you have anything else, you know, maybe a driving license in some countries, you can just get issued an ID, then it's probably better to carry that around than your passport. Chapsticks are a bit like water for me. I wouldn't want to be without one. Obviously water is more important, but you know, if your lips are feeling bad, then having a chapstick is going to be really, really nice. And chapsticks are nice because they're a bit multi-purpose. You know, if your nose is feeling a bit sore, could use it on your nose if the skin on your hands like between your fingers and on your knuckles is feeling a bit nasty you could use it there to get some relief and you know they're really small so it's not taking up that much space in your pack burning man at night is dark even though from pictures everything looks super lit up when you're not in one of those lit up areas you know the space between them is incredibly dark if you're not lit up, you risk getting hit by bicycles or art cars and people just generally not being able to see you in the dark and it's a potential for accidents. So obviously your lights should not be in your pack, they should be on your costume or your body, whatever you're wearing, but it doesn't hurt to have some spare or backup light up type things. If your lights are battery powered, make sure you've got some spare batteries to change them out with in case everything goes dark. And if you're worried about going completely dark, like everything just failing you, make sure you have some things in your bag just in case, you know, some blinky things, some light up bracelets, hairbands, maybe some glow sticks that you can just, you know, fashion into bracelets and necklaces. Just anything that's going to help you stay lit up if your costume lights have failed. They also make great gifts if you run into other people whose lights have failed or just don't have any lights. You can help them out. When nature calls, you will want to be prepared to answer it. So make sure you've got your little toilet kit as well, some single ply toilet paper, the only type of toilet paper that can go in the port some wipes for cleaning the seat before you sit down, those cannot go in the port So make sure you've got a Ziploc bag for, you know, toilet time, anything that can't go in the port you'll need somewhere to put it. And you probably don't want to just put it in your pocket. So Ziploc bags, hand sanitizer, anything that you need for the toilets, make sure you've got it. You also want some kind of torch 
This is going to help you with the portaloos as well so that you can give the portaloo of your choice a quick once over to make sure it's not too horrific before you go in there. And obviously once you shut the door it's pretty dark and terrifying. Head torches are the best because they're completely hands free and you know they go where your eyes go. But if you don't have one of those you can use like a torch necklace, you can make them yourself, I think you can buy them. And worst comes to worst, a regular old handheld torch. These are also helpful for when you're just kind of, you know, milling around and it's a bit dark. There are still dust storms at night, so you want your goggles and a dust mask just in case you do get stuck out in one. That's why it's best to get goggles that don't have any of the like sunglasses tint on them because then you can use them at night as well without, you know, putting them on and discovering everything is really, really dark. Because it's a bit chilly at night, you might want some warm stuff and you know most of the time it's just easier to make sure you're already wearing that stuff rather than dragging it around with you but if you feel like it's going to be a chilly night maybe chuck a warm hat and some gloves in your pack so that you can stick them on if you are at any point getting too cold but you know you do want to keep your bag light so i wouldn't go sticking you know jumpers and coats and like all that kind of stuff in your pack you're just going to have to lug that all around and you might end up not needing it. If you think you need it, put it on. <laughs> Having a cut down version of your medical kit, you know, a few plasters, maybe something to just sanitize a wound with, that can be really helpful because then if you do get any cuts or scrapes or anything, you can quickly deal with them and get on with your night without having to like head back to camp or just be kind of bleeding everywhere. Obviously, if it is something more serious that, you know, isn't gonna be solved with just like a plaster, then, you know, probably head back to camp or go and get proper medical treatment. Earplugs are another great addition to your night pack because some of the sound camps are really, really loud and I hate going to places where they're so loud that when you leave you like, you can't hear properly and all of you and your friends just have to kind of scream at each other if you want to hear each other. So having earplugs means you're not gonna have to deal with that. You can just pop in your earplugs and it will be so loud you'll still hear but it will just be at a more reasonable level. It's also great in case you do end up not heading back to camp and you want to just have a sleep somewhere and then you've got some earplugs to block out a lot of the noise. If you are the kind of person that is likely to be out all night and heading back to camp when the sun is nice and high and bright, bring along some sunglasses so that, you know, you can do that walk of shame without like having the sun just, just blasting you in the face. Like no one needs that before they've even cleaned their teeth in the morning. I don't advise taking out anything valuable with you at night. Things tend to be very hectic, it's dark, it's gonna be difficult to find things if you do lose them because, you know, it's dark. You know, if you're putting your pack on the floor, it's dark, it's much more likely that someone's gonna step on it, it's gonna get tripped over, things like that. Which, by the way, it is a good idea to have some lights for your pack so that that doesn't happen or to help try and prevent that. But there's just much more chance of any valuable items kind of getting lost or damaged at night so it's best to just leave them back at camp or if you can just leave them at home entirely so that you know you're not worried about them while you're at burning man it's a really good idea to include your name and address somewhere on your pack and on any items that you really wouldn't want to lose not your real world address your burning man address so you know your name where your camp's located, maybe if there's anything specific about your camp that's gonna make it like super obvious, then, you know, include that. Like, in the pink fluffy tent. Absolutely no one has a pink fluffy tent. So it would be really easy to spot if that was yours. It just means that if anything does get lost, you know, people have a way to return it if they want to. <laughs> Probably the most important thing is you want to keep this bag small and light. You don't wanna be dragging around like a huge heavy bag with you every night that you're trying to deal with it gets in the way when you're trying to have fun, you're having to constantly keep an eye on it because it's got so much stuff in it that you're worried that it's gonna get lost or damaged or something. So really think about, you know, quantities, how much of that stuff do you really need? You know, what stuff could you reasonably leave behind because you've been dragging it around with you for three days and you have never used that item unless it's your medical kit. And of course, you know, think about what it is that you need. There might be things on this list where you're just like, I'm never gonna need my sunglasses in my bag. And you might have other things where you're like, I just couldn't survive without that thing. I need it on me all the time, so it's gonna go in my night bag. You know, customize it for you. And you know, you'll figure it out after the first couple of nights, what things you are using and what things you could reasonably leave back at camp and be fine about. So I hope this was helpful guys. If any of you have any kind of must have items that you think should be in people's night packs, let us know in the comments. 
And if any of you see me at Burning Man this year, feel free to come and say hi to me. Bye guys.